in his lifelong search for material, one of the most constant points of return for him was birdsong. He took birdsong and made it a structural part of his pieces. Now birds to him are not only sheer sounds of nature, they are sounds reflecting the glories of a god who he felt was in everything. In 1963, he wrote one of his great masterpieces, Et Expecto Resurrectionem Mortuorum, which is for winds and metal percussion instruments. And in the middle of this movement, he gives us a vision of the song of the Calandra Lark. This is not just a transcription. It's a colorization of the whole idea of birdsong. Messian traveled widely in the East and collected all different types of musics. For instance, his use of gongs comes very much from his interest in Indonesian gamelan, but also from his vision of gongs as sacred, magical, almost dangerous instruments. When you hit a gong, you hear not only the one deep sound, but again, many different notes of the harmonic series. He uses Indian rhythms to give a sense of asymmetry, but also he builds up his pieces almost like Balinese landscapes so that there are many different things one on top of each other and it trips along with the kind of almost hysterical good humour of a type of celestial jazz band. Talking about colour in the 20th century from this vantage point, it's completely apt that we finish with the music of Toru Takemitsu. What he took were all of Debussy's revolutionary ideas, but looked at them through a totally Japanese sensibility. And when he was not writing for the concert hall or for chamber music, he was writing for the theatre and particularly for films and being inspired by the idea of films. Well, 
トロトロコですか<笑>この僕が編集したのもね竹部さんがね直せっつったんですよ覚えてますか覚えてますよ覚えてもう白田余計なものやめてよでも捨てようって言うんですよね<笑>あこういうふうにもう結末は現れるのかってびっくりしましたね So many of the things which we would take for granted, Takamitsu saw for the first time in films. Just to give one example, the idea of a curtain gently flapping in the wind was something he saw in a film. In a country where curtains don't exist, it's hardly surprising, but it's still a jolt of the imagination for us. Because... えー、外国に行って全く言葉が分かんなくても僕はすぐ外国に行くと映画館の中に入ってそのより現実生活とそれから彼らの内部とそれから外の時間とかね生活とか感覚とかね言葉なんか分かんなくてもねイメージをこう見てるとね分かるんですね非常に音楽的に分かってくるっていう<笑> Everything we've said about Debussy's idea of taking each sound for itself going to the next one comes together with Takamitsu's eastern sense where he says that for him writing a piece of music is like walking through a beautiful Japanese garden. The piece we're playing is called Dream Window. He makes wonderful titles, but this title seems to be particularly personal to him. It's as though he's opening a whole new window onto not only the Western but the Eastern world, making a synthesis of these two worlds in a way that is peculiarly him but is also particularly contemporary. Now, an enormous amount of the color in French music has been to do. With the spacing of chords, with the fact that the notes aren't cluttered up, there is space for the color to get through the notes. Now, in Takamitsu's music, this has reached another stage entirely. The chords are so wide that they seem to be taking in the entire world. And this is an appropriate metaphor for a Japanese person. Who has found out about the West through films, but who has looked back at Japan through yet another mirror, yet another window. <laughs> <laughs> 